I'm going to attempt to get a little technical. This is just uh, one technical video, possibly more to come. It depends. If you guys like it, let me know. I'll get deeper into it. If you guys think I'm just blowing hot air, well, let me know and I'll go back to my usual videos. I'm going to keep it very layman terms and hopefully I explain it in a way that that not only gets you thinking deeper but makes you have a better understanding as well. So here goes. Hope you liked the video. Happy Thanksgiving everyone. Uh, it's still Thanksgiving. It's about 10.20 at night and I just had a couple of thoughts that I want to get out there. And it's on lobe separation angle. Now, we all know what lobe separation angle is and there's quite a few video out there on lobe separation angle, so I'm not going to go over that simplified um, kind of static portion of it. What I am going to go over with, with you right now is a more corrected sense of it. So, lobe separation angle. We all know that when you call a cam company, it's they're, nine times out of ten, they're going to they're going to recommend a 110 lobe separation angle. And if you want vacuum brakes, it's it's going to be like a 112. OK, well, they really don't understand it or it, it whatever computer they're punching these numbers into. It is it is wrong. OK, lobe separation angle is an overlap period. It, it's a, how should I put this? So the tighter the lobe separation angle, the more the overlap triangle you have. Now, I'm, I'm just going to get to a corrected version of this. I'm not going to go dynamic because that takes a bigger board than this. So, lobe separation angle. We all know when the valve opens, or the valves are open, okay? And here's your port. And it's off the seat. And the piston is at top that center. Here's your pin. Here's the piston. Blah, blah, blah. Now, when we think of lobe separation angle, we think, we try to, we try to tend to Sim oversimplify things, and it's and it's not really simple. And and you can go as far as to say, well, you know, the exhaust is is flowing, and that helps you know scavenge and, and helps the intake and everything. However, look at it this way too. Not only do you have a cylinder that's in the overlap period. Since you have multiple cylinders, I'll guarantee that you have another cylinder that is traveling down. And not only is it traveling down or descending in the bore while, it's while it has the intake valve open, it's also in the fastest part of the cylinder. Because remember, when you have... An engine. Now let's uh, let's. It has a common manifold. This intake valve is open. Air is traveling in. Piston's going down. Remember, when a piston goes up and down, the fastest part of the piston is in the middle of the bore. Okay, and that has to do with rod angularity and uh, and stroke, and it's that gets into something away from lobe separation angle. And it does play a big part, just like off-seat flow, okay? Low lift flow numbers play a big part in LSA. 
All right, so getting back on track. So we have two valves that are open here. We have the exhaust track, okay? And since the intake valve is open, it also goes into the intake. But how does that play an effect on the other intake valve, the other piston traveling down in its fastest part of the cylinder? And now remember, this is, this is all rotating down here. Your cam spinning and the valves are not stopping to move unless they're on the seat. So the lobe separation, if it's a small area and you have both valves open in this one cylinder and an intake open here, it's a small triangle. And what that does is this, this intake, okay, this intake manifold here, it sees that, it sees that this is a stronger pull down. Okay, so the vacuum, you're getting a strong signal here. Your piston's moving fast down. Your intake's open. And you only have a little bit of bleed here. Okay, now let's look at a closer LSA. Now your triangle in between the exhaust and intake is now wider. So what does that do? Well, what happens is when that LSA gets tighter and that triangle gets wider where the valves hang open, it's going to have a stronger signal here. Okay, and again, you still have a piston going down in the bore at its maximum speed. What will happen is now this is hanging open longer. So now instead of the, over, the, the lobe separation, the overlap triangle happening here and here, it's happening here and here. And what does that do to vacuum? A weaker vacuum signal. So you lose, or not lose, but your power brakes gets reduced because you're not pulling as much vacuum as you would. And, uh, and this, this plays a big part in, in not only off-seat flow, but how big your valves are, how big the bore is, how big the stroke is. There is so much more that plays into this that this is, this is, only, this is only picking at the surface. When you start thinking more corrected in this sense, you get a better idea of what you will need later on. So... With that being said, what do you think is going to happen if you have small valves here, okay? If you have small valves, you're going to need a tighter lobe separation angle to get the most torque out of that engine. If you have bigger valves, okay? The valves are huge, okay? It flows a lot more, so your lobe separation gets wider. Now, let's see where else we can go with this without getting into a very dynamic stage so let's just take let's just take a, a 318 okay 318 is small bore it usually has small valves that lobe separation if you put these are just you know general numbers it's not an accurate number 
okay? But it's to give you a, a better sense in how lobe separation angle plays into the size of the engine now. You have a 114 LSA. You'll have good power brakes, okay? Now, let's do, um, let's go to like a, a 208 LSA. Now what's going to happen is you're going to have less vacuum signal because you have more, you have a wider overlap triangle. So we take that same 208 and now we up it to a 360 or maybe if you want to stroke the engine a 408. Because that's a bigger cylinder going down in the bore at its maximum velocity part, it's its maximum speed, okay? Because remember, maximum speed is in the middle of the cylinder. Because of the rod angle. Because not only are you having a rod get shorter, but you're also, the angle of that crank pin is being thrown out. So it's pulling that piston down in two motions so you got the angle pulling it down and you got the rotation of the crank pin pulling it down so if you have a bigger cylinder pulling down what do you think that's going to do to your intake manifold vacuum it's it's going to make it it's going to make it pull hard so now you had a 208 cam and a 318, you got no brakes. But you put that same 208 cam in a 360 or 408, you'll have some brakes. Shoot, in a 408, you'll have power brakes. So, and this, once you start working with that, you start seeing things like, seat flow okay and I really don't want to get into to angles of the seat and the valve and how to cut the seat to get low lift numbers that's something different it is related to this though okay because these valves are only pulled a little bit off their seat that low lift flow number now it becomes very important and very uh, critical of how the engine's going to run and how or how much signal now you have in your intake because if the flow numbers off the seat are higher it's going to dilute that intake charge more it's going to dilute it more easy it's going to affect it more if the low lift flow numbers are low it's not going to affect the intake vacuum as much. So, <clears throat> so just to get you thinking in a corrected sense of lobe separation angle, instead of just thinking a static of, uh, you got your lobe separation, it's non-adjustable, it's the center line of the lobes in the cam between the intake and exhaust. It's a lot more than that. And this, this also go along, along the lines of if you change one thing, you change everything. It's just not changing a degree here, a degree there, or just changing out a cam, or just going up a couple of cubes. All of that changes everything. So, I really don't want to go further into this because, well, if I go further into it, 
then I, I get I get way off topic and we start talking about opening and closing events. And this is just about LSA and this is just to scratch the surface and get you guys thinking in a different direction because the videos that are out there are just so static static and, and these cam companies when you call them they throw one one ten lobe separation angle at you like it's like it's the it, it's the best one to have and then they'll get then they'll just say oh just get a wider duration or get a shorter duration and now you're out of your power range because you got the wrong duration cam you have to LSA is the most important part of your camshaft. The camshaft is your LSA right there. That will, that's going to determine whether your engine is a performer or it is not that performance oriented.